nothing again can touch what this case was. Nothing will bring Timothy back. We all know that. We can't escape that tragedy. That, that the time for that has passed. But I would ask the court to send a message here that reflects how heinous, how callous, how cold, use whatever adjective you want to describe these actions. That even for that first degree child abuse case, that's what this sentence should reflect. And those guidelines just don't even come close. Well, as we know, the judge followed the prosecutor's suggestion and sentenced Sean Devander Ark to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the torture and murder of a 15-year-old special needs son. Plus, the judge went above the sentencing guidelines by adding 50 to 100 additional years for first-degree child abuse and that conviction. Well, Vanda Ark was back in court today to determine if her parental rights to her youngest son will be terminated. Well, in the last few minutes, the judge ordered Vander Ark's rights to be terminated. Her son will now live with his paternal grandparents. Now, our cameras were not permitted in court, but according to our producer in the field, their youngest son wants nothing to do with her. Vander Ark has four surviving children, and the two eldest gave victim impact statements yesterday to honor their brother, the victim in this case, Timothy Ferguson. I regret not putting aside my differences with Shonda and Paul just to check in on him. I regret not dancing with him the last time I saw him at our brother's wedding. These are the things that I can't remedy now. There's no fixing what's been done. No way to redo it all over again. And that's my regret, that I couldn't protect him when he needed me most. Timothy wasn't surrounded by people who loved him when he died. And if I had known that, Nothing could have stopped me from rescuing him and holding him in my arms and telling him I love him, that his big brothers got him, just like I did the day he was born. But because of Sean Devanderock's actions, I instead got to cradle the bag of his ashes in my arms. Now, it can't be argued that Vander Ark's attorney was handed a horrific set of facts in this case, but he did zealously represent his client. Now, after Vander Ark's conviction, he actually spoke to us here at Court TV and really put things in perspective. I passed the bar in 1986. This is the worst case I've ever handled. It's not even, I've, I've handled cases with serial murders. This is the worst case I've ever handled. Uh, you, do, you do your job. You, you, the, the facts were terrible. The, the outcomes were, were worse. You do your job. You come in there, and your job is to represent this woman and to, to press for her point of view, and that's what you do. If you do that, and the prosecutor does that, and the jury does their end, and the judge does his end, justice gets done in the end, and that's the objective. Uh, it, 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 the, now comes the time where you have to sleep after the end. I mean, once you, once you do all the intellectual stuff, the emotionality of it kicks in, and you gotta sit down, and you gotta sleep with these facts, and those images that are forever in my mind. Uh, so that's difficult. But, but, you know, uh, the way I handle it is with, through my faith. I'm a Christian. And so that's how I handle it. But the other people do it in other different ways. But, but the way we keep it professional is because we've taken an oath and we believe in the system that we're working in. And we're going to make it work and we're going to make the right thing happen regardless of the outcome um, and accept the outcome uh, if, if, it's the, if the jury has done the right thing. I would disagree with your characterization that this wasn't a great day. This was a great day. Uh, the, 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 the the object here is, is this isn't a baseball game. It's not winning or losing. It's if justice gets done. And I think justice, the system worked, and her peers have spoken, and justice was done. But <clears throat> more directly to your question, the, the, the question that you've asked is more, oops, I'm sorry. The question that you've asked is more of a technicality than anything else. All those, the, the different degrees of first degree murder, whether it's first degree or felony murder or whatever, they, they all end up meaning the same thing. They're, they're different uh, reasons why we would call them different things, but in the end of the day, they all carry the exact same sentence. They all mean the exact same thing. So uh, don't, don't worry about yourself over, the, over whether it's felony murder or, or, or just first degree murder. The, the bottom line is there is one sentence for it and that's life in prison, and that's what will happen with, with my client. One of the lesser included offenses that she w that the jury could have considered was uh, something called involuntary manslaughter. And in that, the, is, is for, for the purpose of this discussion, is yes, a death occurred, but I didn't intend to do it.
she, the intent issue is where she disagrees. It's, it's not, she, she testified that she didn't remember a lot of things, that, but she testified she remembered others, but it was never her intent to harm this child. It, her, her testimony was, and you know, her discussion with me has been consistent from the very beginning, and that is that I only disciplined my child to the point necessary to achieve the certain goals that I was trying to achieve. And one was to get him so he wouldn't be dishonest with me. The other was to get him so he would be, uh, take, take care of his schooling and, and just the appropriate things that you expect from a parent. Now, the judge admitted at sentencing that Johnson's closing argument nearly swayed his perspective, but ultimately he couldn't be convinced that the defendant had any remorse. Mr. Johnson makes the same argument today that he made at the trial uh, that that this was just negligence. This was her not understanding what was going on. She was really trying to do the punishment. Uh, she was trying to be a good parent and she just didn't realize that Timothy was in such a horrible condition. And uh, I find myself, I found myself, uh, especially during closing argument, quite frankly, finding myself almost believing that. What I realized is that I wanted to feel that way because I didn't want to accept the reality of the situation here. I think that's difficult for everyone. Still with us to discuss our criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Daryl Cohen, and criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Marie Pereira. Thanks again, guys, for being with me. And Marie, I'll start with you. I do want to add this. Um, from our producer on the ground who was in the courtroom, there were no cameras allowed in that courtroom. And he says, um, Vander Ark took the stand. And what she said was she could not believe that she had to have a hearing regarding her parental rights for her youngest son. Um, she couldn't believe that that was happening to her in this country. And I think we kind of both feel the same way about uh, Shonda Vander Ark. What do you make of her taking the stand and claiming that she should have maintained parental rights to her youngest son? It shows she has no remorse. Yes. This was not a death penalty case, but if it was, she certainly checked off all the boxes. Mm. She tortured him. She, insist, she enlisted her other son to torture him as well. She was in a position of trust. He was vulnerable. And she had to know better. Mm. She was an attorney who passed the bar with honors in practicing. So she had no intellectual deficit where mm. you could say she didn't know how to take care of a little boy. She knew what she was doing. And the nerve of that woman if this was a death penalty case, mm. she would have deserved the death penalty. Yeah. So now she has breath to be asking that she has parental rights over that surviving little boy? Mm -hmm. The nerve of her. Yeah. Let me just say what that would have meant was that the child would have been, uh, she would have had the ability to vi visit with her. She would have able to been see, see him that way. It, it wouldn't have meant much more than that. And, and Daryl, I will say this, when you talk about uh, th that type of determination by the court, they look at the best interests of the child. And there's an argument that could be made that if it's in a protected environment, the child, it can be in the best interest of the child to maintain a relationship with the mother. That's generally the presumption in children's court, in juvenile court. Um, so there was a scenario where that was possible, but I want to get your thoughts ultimately on the fact that they were denied. They should have been denied. I was disappointed in her, but I was disappointed when she tortured her child. She should absolutely have her parental rights terminated. Think of this poor surviving young child. Think of what they have to go through as they go through life. What is, where's your mom? Oh, my mom's in prison. Why is she in prison? Oh, she murdered my, my brother. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible. The kids are the ones that suffer. I don't care what happens to her as long as it's not good, but I want that child to grow up in the best possible way that that child can grow up. Yeah, if you're not going to terminate her parental rights, whose parental rights are you going to oh, terminate? Yeah. Um, the prosecutor in the case, you saw him a little earlier arguing with the judge, uh, he spoke after today's determination. Let's take a listen. Uh, this is by far the most difficult case I've ever handled. I've been in child welfare in different capacities since 2011, and I've never seen anything like this. Uh, our number one goal uh, in this case, in the abuse neglect case, is very different than the criminal case, and that is making sure that her younger child, who's a minor, is safe 
and protected. And the judge's decision today to terminate her parental rights permanently was a huge relief. Uh, the judge certainly could have went a different direction and the fact that she didn't ensures that he's protected for the rest of his life. And there it is. I'll just leave it there. That's a great way to end it. That child will be protected now for the rest of his life.